My name is Brent Lemons. I was in the U.S. Army Reserves. I did an eight-year contract. Uh, I ended at uh, private first class. I did nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons. Um, typically, the, the jobs of the military, or especially in the Army, are designated a two number and one letter a system. Mine was 74 Delta, or 74D which it's now called a uh, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, and high yield explosive specialist. This is a shadow box my wife made me uh, when, I was, uh, when I got out of service. I was a Seaburn, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear weapons. Uh, there's now an E on the end of it, which is high yield explosive. Um, my rank, these were two units I served in. Um, name tag, branch, old glory up top. Uh, these were two different, well this one was a beret insignia when I was with this unit. And this is my brigade insignia. It shows I was a member of the Chemical Corps. On it in Latin are three words, uh, Elementus Regamus Proelium, which means uh, we rule the battle through the elements. I did, uh, I did get the Army Service Ribbon. It's the one that everybody gets when you join up. Uh, it's also called the Fruit Loop Badge. It is, uh, it's all the rainbow colors all the way across. Everybody who completes base training in AIT gets it. Yeah, I was really proud of that because that was the biggest challenge of my life I had done up to that point. I'd met the love of my life that I've now been married to about 16 years at this point. And we were talking about marriage and things of that nature. I've been dating for a while and I knew that I didn't have really anything to offer her being a minimum wage employee working retail. So I wanted to make a better life for myself, her, and our future children. So I thought the military was a great way to do that. Um, I had a friend who was a, uh, I forget his exact MOS, but he was human resources. And he had been in the reserves for a while, and he had told me that, hey, um, why don't you join up? Here's what we do. It's a great option. He basically gave me the whole recruiter plug. <laughs> and, uh, of course, you know, he was my buddy. So I'm like, he's Army, I'm Army, we'll go Army. My first day with my unit was actually really funny because I was stationed at the McAllister Ammunition Plant. Showed up to my unit the first day, and it was actually really funny because they had just gotten back from annual training. And we had this guy named Frazier. And Frazier was not the most intelligent individual. He was given an instruction while he was at annual training. He had to write a five page paper because he embarrassed one of our platoon sergeants. Well, he went to one of our other sergeants who is a, a very lovingly called a hillbilly. He came up to me and goes, hey, do you have any paper? And he pulls out one of those pocket sized notebooks about the yay big and rips out some pages and hands it to him. Because the other sergeant didn't specify the size of the paper, he just said pages. He did not specify eight and a half by 11 or two by three. So he wrote them on two by three and he turned them in my first day of drill. I show up, he hands them to the sergeant. The sergeant is very angry, starts to tear into him. The other one comes on, uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh you didn't specify page size. He wrote you the pages you asked for. And it was, I'm talking priceless. This is the most gold I had ever seen. Still one of my favorite memories. I joined up with my unit because they were slotted for overseas deployment. And that was my goal. Um, I get there and then they're like, hey, by the way, we are shifting from what is called a green mission, which is where you go overseas, <clears throat> to a white mission, which is Homeland Security. So they're like, hey, we're switching from green to white mission. So for the next 10 years, we are going to be traveling the country and training doctors, nurses, emergency responders, health departments, EMS, everyone on how to respond to dirty bomb attacks or mass casualty events in the United States. Let's say somebody drops a, a bomb laced with anthrax on Los Angeles. 72 hours after the incident, my unit is on site to relieve all the first responders and to clean people and materials and equipment and get people back to normal. So we were there to rescue these people from any chemical, biological, or nuclear weapon attacks that may have occurred on U.S. soil. So there was this place in Muscatatuck, Indiana. Now, Muscatatuck, Indiana is a town that the federal government used what's called eminent domain on. They bought this town and it's got built like office buildings, houses, cars, all kinds of stuff. We could set up like we were uh, taking people from an area that had been bombed and we we're cleaning them up, getting all the radioactive or chemical or biological agents off of them so they can get to medical treatment and all that. And it it's really, really creepy. Like they hang sheets out to say, please send food with like paint on them. Like it's, it is excellent. 
it is a top notch training facility and it's so cool because you just pull up in there and it just looks like a town but it's not it's actually a training facility my favorite part there is they would regularly um, they had speakers and things set up in the buildings they would have people crying or screaming and they had the whole experience all of it like it felt as if you were walking into a disaster zone like they would pour you off the buses that as soon as you hit the ground running you pulled out all your equipment you set up and you were on a time limit getting everything done get people in out and on the way and they had actors coming through with makeup on to, like torn up stuff torn up clothes they did uh wounds on them with makeup and latex and stuff and they would come through and they would have like a tag like a triage tag and we would go through and we would show them uh, the way through we would clean them all up and get them to medical care obviously none of them were actually hurt but it was one of those that they had a tag that told us what their their problem was, what their ailment was, whether they were dead, whether they were dying, did they have kids with them, whatever it was. And we did all these various types of training at this facility. And it was, it was so close to a real life exercise. It was, it was astounding. Yeah, I learned so much from that. And that was actually my last annual training I went to. By far, top-notch best training facility and I'd been I've been coast to coast top to bottom of the US like I, I got to go there and it was the crowning thing like the crowning achievement if you will of my military service was getting to interact with this facility it was so great